Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. We're going to talk about XRP. Specifically, we're going to talk about on demand liquidity or ODL, as it is called, because the volume is off. And it has been off ever since Ripple decided to not focus on those corporate treasury payments, those high volume payments, but rather focus on the low volume, high frequency payments. And it has made a big change. We can see here that the ODL volume today was 800,000. Compare that to the last daily all-time high of 20 million. Where are we going to recapture some of that volume? Well, I think we can turn to Marjan Delatine. She is the global head of banking at Ripple. She spent 10 years at Swift, so she really knows payments. She really knows her languages too. She can speak Norwegian, English, French, and Spanish. Quite amazing. Well, she was on a discussion on the ninth. It was with the future of finance. And she talks about how this live product, which is ODL, is going to launch soon in Brazil. And on-demand liquidity provides this on-the-fly liquidity to move funds. It's revolutionary and it's part of a big agenda really changing the nostro vostro correspondent banking model remember that banks have to pre-fund those accounts which are called nostro accounts and you don't sometimes always use those accounts you but you are pre-funding them just in case especially in those exotic corridors so ripple is focusing on those corridors that are considered exotic it's not the ones that you necessarily would have banks doing every day so have a listen to where she talks about that liquidity and you want to really move funds uh, when you need it uh, so the way that we are working on this and this is a live product that it is used in multiple um, corridors uh, is um, using uh, xrp which is our native uh, uh, crypto assets as a bridge between the two uh, let's say fiat currencies and this is completely revolutionizing actually uh, the way that the pre-funding is happening today so you really on the fly you move funds uh, and we extend the services now to more and more corridors, typically corridors, exotic corridors with lots of challenges uh, like Philippines, um, uh, very soon with Brazil. So there are, let's say there is a big agenda and, and roadmap on that. So this is this is changing the Nostro Vostro relationship. Now, if anyone ever tells you that Ripple is a fraud or XRP is a scam, they don't understand banking because i'm going to also play for you something in that discussion that comes from somebody who is not even at the slightest bit connected to ripple this is an advisor for finality his name is olaf ransom he's in switzerland and if you know the finality project they are going to use a utility settlement coin and they know that the digital asset can actually reduce friction they're going to do it among the group of banks or shareholders, as they call themselves, which involve Credit Suisse, Mizuho Bank in Japan, UBS, State Street, uh, ING, a lot of big ones, 20 some of them. And they're going to use this uh, utility settlement coin for their wholesale payments. It's going to be kind of a walled garden, if you will. But when you listen, to Olaf talk about how many Nostro accounts are maintained. I had no idea. I knew it was a lot because I had read one time that the um, bank in Saudi Arabia was maintaining 200. And I thought, wow, that's a lot. But when you hear about one of the shareholders in the finality group, how many they are maintaining, I think it's going to shock you. Listen to this. In the past, you're a clear, clear stream or standalone funding. Um, this will be unfortunate. Banks have their liquidity in far too many places. They did a little test a couple of days ago with one of the finality shareholders, not even a GC. And I said to one of the treasury folks, just out of interest, how many entities, Nostro accounts and currencies are you managing? He said north of 500 legal entities, north of 500 Nostro accounts and north of 50 currencies. That world in wholesale is quite complex. A 
and that adds huge amounts of cost. And we've got an opportunity as we switch. And Denise, Denise rightly pointed out, we've got this DLT opportunity. We make that switch. We lay out the infrastructure for tomorrow. We have an opportunity uh, when we have to make the most of it, which is to set ourselves up in a way that liquidity can be better managed than it has been in the past. Wow. North of 500. So more than 500 Nostro accounts. And that is more than 50 currencies. So you think about that, how complex that is. You think about the huge amount of cost, all that parked capital. DLT, the distributed ledger technology, is the opportunity to fix this. And the digital assets, whether it's XRP or in this case, they're going to use a utility settlement coin, it's not a scam. It really is solving a real problem for these banks. This this particular advisor, Olaf Ransom, has nothing to do with Ripple. So I think that it's just a matter of not understanding banking is when people use that line. They hear other people use that line. And so they think it is, uh, sounds cool. I don't know. I can't believe it. So Brazil. Is it really going to be compelling for Brazilians to use RippleNet technology with XRP? Well, this is Luis Antonio Sacco. He's the director of Ripple in Brazil, and he pointed out that although transactions using SWIFT are the main ones in the country right now, the system is about 90% more expensive than Ripple's solution and that Brazil is already the largest market for XRP in the world, representing over 30% of all transactions using Ripple. This is so compelling. Of course, if you can save 90% on your cost, it's going to be a compelling use case. And remittances, well, how much is that corridor? You can see here that remittance is sent to Brazil. The top two places that it comes from are the United States and Japan. 593 million on an annual basis from the US and 562 million from Japan. So I think that Bitstamp can easily handle this US corridor. So who's going to provide that liquidity in Japan? Obviously, it's going to be connected to SBI. It very well could be the FX coin exchange. This is an SBI backed exchange. And they said last month that they are soon going to do XRP remittances. So it's very well, I think, could be this service. We just have to wait and see. The volatility in the um, currency pair is quite big too with the yen. SBI added the Brazilian real Japanese yen pair to their FX trade site in December. And take a look at this, at this <laughs> volatility. You've got the pair ranging from 27.02 down to 18.187 just in the last 180 days. That is a lot of volatility. That's a lot of risk to manage when you have swings that big. And Mr. Kitao, he is really talking about XRP a lot. This is an interview that he did on the 12th for the Weekly Economist. And he is talking about uh, how XRP provides this um low cost with international remittances, uh, significantly reduced costs, it's safe, it's speedy, and it doesn't have to use the international interbank communication network of SWIFT. And he says it's a plus for the users and friendly for financial institutions. He goes on to say that there is nothing better than being able to make safe and scalable money transfers in a short time and at a low cost, both at home and abroad. So Japan had a very important law go through on May 1st that was really needing to have the final clarity put on cryptocurrencies. And it passed, it's 
now in place. And that's why you see Mr. Kitao talking about XRP often. In fact, he is going to be the keynote speaker at the Regional Banking Summit next Tuesday. So on the 16th of June, he's going to give that speech, which they will give him 40 minutes. So oh, there's Momo making noise again, 40 minutes of um, stage time. And he's not just a rinky dink salesperson that is among some uh, low flying bankers. No. Do you know that the person who's going to give the opening remarks is the ex prime minister in Japan? And he is now the top of the top. He is with the, well, he is the minister of finance, which is the top of the entire banking and crypto exchange government body. And so you can see if Mr. Kitao is going to give the keynote. Um, he is among the most influential people in this country when it comes to banking. And something curious also in the Brazilian media, I wanted to point out something that I found, and we're not seeing this in the articles from the West. They're talking about Ripple focusing on Nubank, one of the largest digital banks, and they are actually the largest fintech in Latin America. They're a neobank headquartered in Sao Paulo, and they have their engineering in Germany, and they also have an office in Mexico City. And they do that with a credit card that's controlled completely by a mobile app. They have approximately 20 million customers. They're privately held, and the company has got a $10 billion valuation. So they just broke into the Mexican corridor. And I think this is very interesting. Just happened in March where their products will go live. They're going to focus on the 36 million unbanked. And they recently also launched a hub in Argentina. So I look at this photograph here, this beautiful, beautiful photograph. It's by the, a social media photographer at Wasabi Tool in Japan. And if it seems really quiet to look across this lake, this water, I think a lot of people think, well, ODL looks very quiet, but under the lake, there is a lot of hungry fish. So don't be fooled by the low volume right now. XRP is going to be the bait to hook millions of people moving money across borders. Doesn't matter if it's a bank or a payments service company, we don't care. We just want to move that money on the fly. All right, everybody, I'm going to continue with these beautiful photographs. I just couldn't stop looking at the photographs by this Wasabi tool. He has the um, Twitter site that that is just it's just a, really I had a hard time choosing just three photographs to show you because they are all so beautiful. I'll put a link in the description below. but. Uh, these were three that stood out for me. And then when I got to this one, which I thought was so incredibly beautiful with the moss and the stone uh, water catch and with these beautiful uh, array of fall leaves, I realized I bet a lot of people don't know what this is. Unless you live in Japan, you may not know that this is a shishi otoshi. It's a kind of water fountain Japanese device that is found in the gardens. And the original intent was used to frighten away animals like boar or deer that may want to come in and eat the plants. What the, what, how it functions is the water trickles down and moves the tube of bamboo. You can see right here. The water is trickling down. And so as this fills up, the center of gravity then causes the water to pour out because it moves down like this. And when it returns back after it empties out, there is a 
heavy sound. And that sound is supposed to scare away the unwanted animals. And it repeats. So even today, in today's urban setting, it's used primarily as an aesthetic, both a visual aesthetic and a sound. You get the sound of the banging against a piece of stone or a piece of wood, but also you have this lovely uh, water sound too as well. I'm just going to play one uh, rotation for you to hear that sound. And depending on how big how wide the diameter is of the bamboo and how long this sound changes. So there are just no two sounds that are alike. And once you get accustomed to the sound, it becomes really a big part of the experience of a Japanese garden. Okay, here we go. You can hear. And also, too, how fast the water comes out dictates how often that sound is. That is a very um, short duration. I have been in a lot of gardens where it might only sound once every 90 seconds. So it just depends. You know, it's all part of the person who um, sets the garden and, de and decides on that interval okay everybody yeah do take care i think i'm going to do an extended fluff on these shishi otoshi do take care sayonara for now bye bye